basic income is going to be the bribe to accept the microchip implant, I fear. That's ridiculous. Will we one day be able to make accurate economic predictions? Or is economic precision just a fantasy? Richard? It's not a fantasy. Um, I mean, if you look at my forecast, they've been pretty accurate for the last uh, 35 years. Uh, last time I sat together with Jillian Tett in Tokyo in 1997, um, I think, you know, if she remembers uh, what I said, I think it panned out pretty, pretty neatly um, that Japan won't recover until bank credit creation recovers, which was only 2013-14. Um, and uh, the problem is in the banking system and so on. I proposed a new monetary policy in 95, uh, which I called quantitative easing, which is a quick way of getting out, but they refused to adopt it and then distorted it to prolong the recession. I had this false QE. Um, so, so really, uh, it's possible, yes, is the answer. But of course, the powers that be may not want it because they have different agendas. And that's what we always have to keep in mind. You know, what is the actual goal here? Guy, do you agree with that? Is it ever possible? No, I, I don't. And I'm, I'm drawing these comments on a book by Nassim Taleb uh, called The Black Swans, two books, and a, a book, Anti-Fragility. And basically his thesis, which, with which I agree, is that we have to learn to live with uncertainty. We are not faced with an industrial society situation where you can predict the risks and then develop insurance systems so that gives people that. We are in the situations of globalization, an era of pandemics, global warming, where shocks can hit all of us at any stage. We're all vulnerable, okay? And if in those circumstances you recognize that obvious, well, I, I find it a fairly obvious fact, if you like, then you have to develop systems that deal with people's fragility to give them a sense of resilience, both at individual level and at society level and at economic level. It's one of the reasons why I support a basic income, because then you get people saying, yeah, I'm going to be able to handle a shock if it hits me, unless it's totally catastrophic, but at least the, within a range. So I think we've got to learn to live with uncertainty let me and just uncertainty bring, for sorry, guys, let me just bring richard back to uh to comment on that because completely diametrically opposed here yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so richard do you um, want to come back quickly and then well on, on two part. levels so i do think it's possible because it you know they just haven't tried and if you work empirically it's not so hard you know quantity of credit creation disaggregated into uh bank credit for the real economy for GDP will tell you what GDP is going to do. What about and, and then for, for asset transactions will tell you what asset markets are going to yeah. do. So it's possible. Um, and, and also the conclusion is interesting. You come to a conclusion we need a basic income. And of course, I sympathize with this idea, um, which is an old idea, a century old. Um, but why has it been favored since, well, the last, I don't know, 10 years by all the billionaires, the Davos billionaire class? Why are they favoring it? Because they want to roll out centralization, digital ID, and digital money, and CBDCs. And we, if you link that, um, it, it becomes a very totalitarian system. So you have to ensure that, that we don't have so much centralization. Okay. And the basic income is going to be the bribe to accept the microchip implant, I fear. I think that, excuse me, that's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> because one of the things that when people have resilience, they become stronger about demanding other things, okay? We need people to feel less fearful. That's the economic issue of our time and less vulnerable. So I think, I think the reality is there's a famous term uh, invented by a disgusting man, Rumsfeld, unknown unknowns. And we are facing a future of unknown unknowns. We've already had six pandemics this century. And we don't know when the next one's going to hit. We don't know when the next... There have been 500 financial shocks since the beginning of the 1980s. We don't know when the next one will come. And I've defied... All the neoliberal economists have failed. I think we need to think out of the box for transforming and and in the last comment i would like to make if i may which is that one of the the sins of this hegemonic system is comes from what the 
the, what's called the Austrian School of Economics, which, which formed the background of the Mont Pelerin Society and Thatcherism and so on. And one of their tenets was the following. It says, anything that doesn't have a price has no value. Now, that meant that automatically, if you privatize something, that increases economic growth. And it's infantile for politicians to be saying growth, growth, growth. But for me as a student, we would have thought this was mad. Distribution matters. Distribution matters. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.